<laughs> you are the temple. And then God gave us sexuality. So what's the problem with the name of the book? You see, it's, there, there is this, and I'm addressing now, we, we're not in church, so you'll see the raw man. <laughs> you know what I mean, we're in a social setting. Mm -hmm. And I'm making my case, you're the jury. So, so, so therefore, oh, sex in the sanctuary, how could you put it? I mean, come on. So here's what I've done. We say that every doctrine, every teaching can be found in the tabernacle. Amen. Don't we say that? Yes. So what, somebody has written about prayer in the sanctuary. Well, Roger Duncan wrote about sex in the sanctuary. Look at these faces. <laughs> But, but I, 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 I need to make my case, and you will see why. One of the things that you, you, you don't know, and you may, uh, you may not know, as I, that you may not know, in Kenya, more women watch porn than any other African country. Women. Pornhub. Pornhub, which is the biggest... Pornography site in the world has analytics that can tell the demographics of who watch, when they watch, how long they watch, how where they are from. South Africa and Kenya leads Africa in porn, but Kenya, more women are watching porn than in any other African country. That's, you can go online and find it. I go to Las Vegas almost every year, I see the statistics, I talk to porn addicts, and I deal with some of them. So what I'm coming is facts, things I've, this, things I've seen. Now, in Kenya in particular, boys are watching, your boys, your sons, your girls. Let me tell you something else, as I make my case. When T.D. Jakes, that great televangelist, goes in Atlanta and have manpower, and all these things. Internet porn in the hotel goes up a thousand percent. Why? Christians are watching porn. Hmm? Now, Banner Group did a study when Adventists come for GC and gather in their thousands as well in hotels, and it's the same thing. So here what is my issue? My issue is, if there are sexual problems and issues in our church, and it's something that God has given us, it is so integral to our, to our existence, so integral to our lives, we love it, we enjoy it, we do it, but you can't discuss it. Now I come, I come as a foreigner, an outsider, and I'm telling you, I'm in pain. So if you find my tone is a bit aggressive this morning, you forgive the preacher. Because I cannot see a problem. It is there, it is so blatant, it is a problem. But there's this conspiracy of silence. We're not supposed to talk. But this morning, we will talk. Amen. <laughs> this morning, we will talk. And we will talk and you ask questions and we deal with this matter once and for all and try to find it and fight it. And I want to enlist people in my army to fight this thing and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, you'll realize why the devil is fighting this subject. So let me make a case. You know, all PhD students have to stand and defend their thesis. So if I'm making a potent argument, you say good morning. Are you with me? I began yesterday's sermon by saying, God has no way of explaining spiritual things that you cannot see, mm. except to use things that you can see. Mm. So the physical is what explains the spiritual. And Job said, in my flesh I see God. And most theologians interpret that text to mean that in, 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 in his flesh, in, in, in his, his now, in his humanity, he will see God. But the word for flesh means basar, which means it is, it is that rottening flesh. Watch me. What rottening flesh, and it is worst state. He was also looking at his body. Now I want you to follow me. In other words, through my body, I see God. So the body is the greatest explanation of God. 
And any activity in the body explains God more than anything. So when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like none to I'll see the kingdom of heaven is like none to this. He is using a physical to explain a spiritual. Well, I want to tell us that this temple, this tabernacle, this body is the greatest explanation of God. And let me just explain a few things. For example, the heart is considered in scripture in a the throne room of God. And, 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 and you'll see, I'm building my case. So on the heart have coronary artery, coronary, where you, a crown, you have these coronary arteries that goes up and feeds the, the, the upper coronary. So it's like a crown in the heart. Now, 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 now watch me. In Revelation chapter 5, it is shown that God is, there is worship. There is worship going on because the throne room is considered a heart. Now in that worship room, in, 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 in Revelation chapter 5, there are 20 and 4 elders. There are 20 and 4 elders in a sense that are protecting this throne room. Well, around your heart, there are 24 ribs. Now follow me. In my flesh, I see God. In my flesh, I see God. There, 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 there are 20 and 4, four elders. There are 24 ribs that surrounds and protect. Now, this is a sternum. This is a sternum. And the sternum have three parts. And, and there's a part called the gladiolus. The gladiolus is like the sword. And then there's a point they call it the ziffy sternum. And there's a handle. Well, when you watch a skeleton, you will see coming out of the mouth of the skeleton is like a sword. In that same chapter with Revelation, it talks about that, that the word of God comes forth from his mouth like a sword in my flesh. I see God. You have pulmonary circulation taking place in the body, which have deoxygenated blood, which is exchanged for oxygenated blood, red and blue in a sense. One is atoning for the other. One represents sin. One represents a righteousness. And it's happening on a tree, a pulmonary tree. It is a tree he died on. It's a tree, and on the tree have fruits, your alveoli. And there is an exchange, and then an exchange of carbon dioxide for oxygen. The carbon dioxide, which represents the sin, goes in the tree. The tree takes it and makes fruit. And even in my breath, every breath I breathe, I'm living salvation, atonement for sin. In my flesh, I see God. Amen. Amen. Your skull, Calvary, Calvaryum, which represents like God got the whole as skull. It's a wrong thing. In my flesh. I see God. That is what Job meant. Are you with me, church? I'm building my case on so. So the body, this temple, and the greatest explanation of God is when a man and his wife, Paul says, come together in a holy embrace and express their sexual nature. That's the greatest explanation. There is none other. You can't say, a hey, kingdom of heaven like a rock. And, no, no, no. Me and you. And let me assure you, are, are you with me? <coughs> a man, and I'm going to shock some of your senses, but you know what I'm talking about. So, for, for example, just to show in my, in, my, in my flesh, I see God. This is called the sacrum. Eh? This area is called the sacrum. Well, the sacrum comes from the word sacred. And so the sacrum has the most sacred things. In my flesh. So why you can't talk? So when I wrote this book, and the reason why I want advocates, because when I leave here, there are some critics who are saying, why do you call it? Well, I am a temple, I am a sanctuary, and I have all these appendages and stuff like that. In my flesh. Yes, we talk, you say, think not because you are discerning their thoughts. No, don't get them easy. The thing about it, let's relax. You do these things, you know these things, you feel these things. So God has written his most profound teaching in my body. So it takes a it takes a pint of blood. I'm just summarizing, it takes a pint of blood for a man. To, to, to effect sex. Blood comes in the caviosum and spongiosum 
of his penis for him to effect because God, remember in my flesh I see God so every activity we're supposed to look so you're not supposed to go and have sex with your wife except you understand that you, you're realizing what is God saying through these things so because every ejaculation of a man there are 300 million sperms a sperm represents an egg I mean a sperm represents his word and so he placed in the male his word so every time a man goes to his wife he represents christ with the word because the bride is the what is the church the bride is represented he is christ this is the church and he's supposed to go to his bride with power so 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 you're supposed to to go because now you're representing God, that is why for a man to effect sex, he given an erection. Because you represented, now here the spiritual things. Don't think about it. You are representing God. He has given you stuff so that every time you see it, you remember him. But the thing is, most of us have been eating without thinking. <laughs> you know, if I advise couples, you must say your grace before meals. You know what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> you, 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 go, you see, you're representing God. This is a spiritual matter. You think it's physical. You go and you say, God, give me grace and strength so that I can partake of this being Jesus. <laughs> because I, I represent you. I represent you here. That is why he gave he give men so much seed. And, 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 and so a man, zakah, male, zakah, in the Hebrew is a protrusion. When you write the Hebrew word for male, it's a protrusion. When you write the word for female, it's an indentation. It's like a puzzle. When you fit a puzzle, a puzzle has a part like this and a part like this. Isn't that so? So in watching God's intent and Hebrew, I know no gay person, no homosexual, no scientist can convince me. Because when I even watch the word and I watch my body, I know it's supposed to fit like this, not this. In my flesh, I see God. So, in the scripture, now I'm giving an overview, so I'm going all over. In the scripture, as soon as God says, be fruitful and multiply, the second verse, he said, you shall eat this and you shall eat this and the other. Woman, let me tell you something. Be careful what you feed your men and your boys. Because they represent God. And the reason why there is so much proliferation of drugs for sex and, 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 and Viagra and Cialis and all these things. It is because your sons are being beaten very early with all these KFC. KFC is killing foolish Christians. <laughs> KFC and all these things. And you beat men. As soon as you say, because you need food to be strengthened so that you can perform. And the reason why there's so much pharmaceutical drug for men, Red Bull, this beer, this that, for them to drink, and they drink it. And what happens? Yes, they get an erection, but it interferes and destroys the, the, the small capillaries of their organ. And then eventually, you have 40 year old men that are impotent. And when a woman, when a woman starts lacking, she unconsciously starts looking. <laughs> <laughs> Some are very serious. Is this happening in Kenya? <laughs> Is it for real? But but somebody has to break this glass ceiling mm -hmm. because I'm telling you we're in trouble. I want you to remember for me where I just start off. I'm going somewhere else and come back. I started off talking about the porn industry. I wanted to get your attention and let me see if I can highlight this problem a little more. Church, hear me good. Hear me good because there are parents inside of here. That is why I'm happy. It is the porn industry that drives technology. This Apple that you think is Apple and Samsung, I can tell you, I go to Las Vegas and speak to them. It's the porn industry. When I was a young man, it was VHS cassette. In fact, even younger than that, you, 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 you had hustler magazines. And we lived in a print-based culture. Print, now we have image. And so your children's sexuality is being formed right in front of your eyes. 
based on all these images. And there is a principle of journalism that says there is a reader inscribed in the text. In other words, there is always somebody in mind. And now they have moved from an image culture, a, a print base, to an image culture. And the devil knows the, op, the, the, audit, the optic nerve is 500 times larger than the auditory nerve. What you see impacts you more. You see your girl children, their, their, their sexuality is being formed by Rihanna and, 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 and these women, even your dress. And there is a sex, there, <laughs> there, is a, there is a way in which I notice our girls, even in our church, they don't know because it's subconscious. Their sexuality is being formed by all this image of these women who are very thin and they look like this and they behave, you have to stretch your neck as if in a way, watch them, watch them. These behaviors have not come just like that. In fact, these mothers here, it was not around when you were younger. This flicking of wrist and moving, it is these people in the porn industry is trying to affect these women so they always have a look like, I'm waiting for you. They are telling the men, watch them, watch what they wear. And you know Kenya is very westernized. Hmm? So you watch your work, that is what, and your boys now, on the opposite end, they are playing with them with porn. So every time that young man is watching the girls in church, he's having sexual thoughts. And the average young 15 year old, 16 year old, every 15 minutes he has a testosterone spike. So every 15 minutes a man almost always has sex on his mind. And so, you have all these things happening. You're trying to, to worship and you have problems in your head. And why? What, what I don't like, and I've been preaching this week, is like, brethren, and hear me, we, we are friends today. What, what bothers me the worst, Elder, is the level of hypocrisy. Jesus' most scathing remarks was not for people who are sinning, you know. He embraced the wine babers. He embraced, but you see hypocrisy? It is, it is so offensive to me. And I believe I have a relationship with my God that you can be seen. And when I say you, I mean Kenya in general and church in particular. You can be seen there is so much problem with our sexuality. You can be seen we are losing our people. But you can't talk, you can't preach, you can't address it because of something. Somebody has to stand and say, we have to talk about this subject. We have to have meaningful conversation. Hence the reason why I wrote the book so that we can bring back the holiness. Because there is a perversion of what is happening. The devil has, is rewriting this sex. He has made it so casual. Most of the movies you have, most of the movies are introducing our children to lesbianism and homosexuality unconsciously. I'm telling you, it is easier now because the movies they're kissing. Most of your children in schools, trust me, brethren, is there any teachers here? Are there any teachers here? Teachers, let me see your hands. Teachers, good, good. I want to ask you a question and tell me. I'm not, I'm not preaching, I may be passionate, but I don't want to preach. Let me ask you, now, now you teaching young ones or big ones? What age? From age 12, 12 to 18. 12 to 18. Anybody teach teach younger than 12? Does adventurer count? Yeah, adventurers. What age is the adventurer? Um, five, five, five to five. Have you ever seen any sexual thing with them? Yeah. They actually come to us with issues. They come with issues. You hear? Adventurers have issues. Where are they getting it from? Porn. You have access to iPad in your house, computers in your house. Because the porn industry is what drives technology. Because the more, the more you treat yourself, the more, the more these things are available, the more they can get the children. And they understand the principle, the earlier you get the child, the more damage you do. If you get a baby, in, for those of you who know embryology, if you get a child from the womb, and you damage any gene, the damage is greater. If I take a knife and cut you now, it will bleed 
in a few days you are healed here's the principle the earlier you affect the person the more damage you do in the future mm. the porn industry is the ones behind every technology on earth which has to do with communication so they have print they say ah no 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 they need to get it more in the hands of people so they had vhs cassette remember vhs cassette mm -hmm. huh? but in a VHS cassette, a man has to put it in a tape recorder and his family may be able to see him, so he's constrained. So they wanted to improve that, so they get disc, you can have your own Walkman pad and watch it on your own. Now we have cell phone, it is the industry, cell phone has made it everywhere. In fact, there are churches that I know in the U.S. and stuff that they are, they are young people, white class, they are preaching, they are so hooked, they are watching porn. Because it is available. And just imagine, people can know that it's happening in my church, it's affecting, but you're silent. How can we be silent when such an issue is destroying our children? And the basis... And, and what is even more bothersome to me is when I ask, I ask, what's your problem? <laughs> now, I have to tread softly with this. But please, don't take offense because offense is not intended. But I have to address hard issues because Jesus says, you made of none effect, you make of none effect the word of God by your tradition. Mm -hmm. Jesus, not me, I'm quoting him now. No, you tell me, we can't discuss it because it's the culture. We can't discuss it because of the tradition. Somebody has to do like Jesus and defy the culture to solve a big problem. Amen. You can't just make culture a cloak to continue people that are being damaged. And when your children, and then you see them, they are so hooked on porn, hooked on sex, hooked on all these things. And that perpetuation of problems. Problems, problems, problems. And God has to raise up some people to address the issue. So I wrote the book so that we could begin to talk because I know some people can't do it in public. You will read. And then you can pass on. You can buy for your children. It's not about money. It's about getting the word out because it is a problem. It is a problem. So, so this industry, and I can tell you, Comcast, people who own Facebook, and they are the drivers. They drive it and porn up, you get free porn, so to speak. <coughs> free porn. And I'm moving to my subject, free porn, so to speak. But they know if they can sow a seed in a man first. They sow the seed and then he, be, he comes and he starts to pay for more gruesome stuff. Because the way sex works on the brain, now watch me. God is so wise, anything that he's supposed to continue, he puts pleasure. So the, the brain has some pleasure pathways. So in order for you to continue and not starve, he gives pleasure in eating. In order to continue the human race, he wanted us to continue, be fruitful and multiply. But I need for you to continue doing this. So I, will, I put pleasure, pleasure in it. But some people like a parent who put jam on a bread, this generation licks off the jam and leave the bread. <laughs> <laughs> the lick off the jam, leave the bread. God, God put pleasure so that man and wife could come together and stuff like that and enjoy holy matrimony. But we have thrown away the matrimony and just want to lick the jam. <laughs> because there is a short circuit that the porn industry does in particular, and the highly sexualized. You sell in a car, there is a female. They have objectified women. So, you sell in toothpaste, there is a naked woman in bikini. What bikini has to do with toothpaste? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? But you interfere with boys, so that every time they see a woman, and I'm telling you, and these young men here who listen to me, when you're in church, the word for worship and the word for sex come from the same root. Proskaleo and proskaneo. Cross me into face because human beings are the only creatures that face each other to have sex. And the reason why sex and worship are so close together because they have dimensions of manifestation things that you can only, you know, when you're worshiping, sometimes you find yourself in a place that you, you know, you, you actively praising God, you find yourself in a place just like sex. God gave sex 
so that we can understand spiritual things. Now watch me. I'm going to make a very important point. Because I'm summarizing my book in a sense. I'm making an important point. I said God gives us natural things to appreciate spiritual things. Well, how do you know? How do, how do I make a man understand what it is to get to heaven? You say, oh, I will put some ingredients in sex. And let me for to be decent, not to interfere with your mind. So when a man and a woman engage in sex, they arrive. You know what I'm talking about. So you arrive, you reach that stage of arrival. Well, that simple three minute trail of, well, not even five minutes, not even 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. Now watch me, it's a serious point I want to make. That 30 seconds trail that God gives us so that we, when we arrive, when there is this area of climax, that is to tell us well, that it is what it is to arrive in heaven. But on earth, you get a little experience that some people risk their life for. They risk disease to get 30 seconds of pleasure. <laughs> they, 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 they risk their family for a small moment of pleasure. God is saying, just imagine in heaven, you will have an eternity. So, so the comparison, that is why I say, you don't eat and don't think. You must say, no, I'm sending some of you married people who are still active. Go and think now. Every time you approach your, and I want to sow it in your brain. Every time you approach your spouse, you must think now. Say, oh, oh. That is what the pastor said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. Think. When you, serious, it's, it's, it's dimension. When we reach that place, it says heaven. God is trying to communicate how sweet heaven will be. Amen. Amen. And you know, as I said, Paul argued that the man and his wife, in all the interaction, is the greatest explanation of God. That is why I have a serious problem when we don't talk about sex. Because the sex is what brings us the closest to God. Where two become one. Where we have the ability through this thing called sex to create in a sense. So God has given us. But you know what? Don't, don't, don't talk about the greatest thing that God has given us. So now, let me transition. Are you still with me? Yes. yes. So let me transition. And give the basic outline of the book, Sex in the Sanctuary. Every single instrument or furniture in the sanctuary speaks about our sexuality. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That word gate, that entrance of the tabernacle. The reason why he said enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. A man must never enter the gates of his wife without first singing thanksgiving and praise. You don't beat her in the morning, talk her down, shout her down, and then you come in the evening and you just want, no, 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 enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes, that's what it means. Now, now that gate, that, 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 that veil is, 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 is the same word you get him, 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 H-Y-M-N. But him is also the same word you get high men. Watch me, watch me, just, just, just that where you get high men. So, a woman could have a physical one or in the spirit there is a spiritual one there is a hymen that you need blood it, you need to break that barrier God is saying in the text enter into that gate with thanksgiving so in other words if you teach your son sanctuary sex if you read this book he will understand you don't just rush in to Shekinah glory <laughs> you, you don't just rush in the most holy place <coughs> No, you enter into the gates with thanksgiving. Now, this is a very critical point because most women, they may not tell you, but most of them, they need you to bring the flower and be kind. Now, women, sometimes, when I'm talking about you, give me a high. Yeah. <laughs> I, give me a so I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. You make me so uncomfortable. Tell me something. Please, I want to know. Isn't it correct? Amen. That you need to be Yes. Yes, Pastor. Eh? Yeah. Send her to the flower bath. Eh? Do her toes, her nails, and whatnot. Listen, when you 
enter into the gates with thanksgiving and praise. All is yours. There is no resistance because you are obedient to the text. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and praise. The word him and hymen. So in other words, I am telling you that sex, proskaleo and proskaneo, worship and, and sex is very close. Very close together. Now, as you enter into the gates with thanksgiving, now, you may have fallen out in the morning. There may be issues you have with your spouse. So you know what you do? Now you reach the brazen altar where you confess. Watch it, watch it, watch it. There is no sex properly without first dealing with the issues. Can I hear a man, especially amen. the woman? You know, we men, we don't care. <laughs> Naturally, it's like, hey, what are you talking about? And we think we can make up with sex. A woman womb don't need sex, it need intimacy. And in, wait a minute, into me, see? Into me, see? She needs intimacy, and intimacy means you don't just offend me, you don't lash me, you don't talk to me rough, you don't talk down to me, both me, treat me as anyhow, and then we need to deal with this issue. Hear me good. This was an Amosa man. Especially the, 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 the younger ones. The older ones, well, they have done their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Young men, I want to save you. I want you to have a good life. I want you to have a good life. You deal with this thing. Yeah, no, but, but seriously, woman, you know, this is your part. Seriously, mothers too. You see, that is why the conversation. You know, I have a 20 year old son, and I was telling my friends. <laughs> He called me while I'm here and said, Daddy, I had sex. It's the first time. You see, I see my sister here. <laughs> that's culture. That's, a, that's culture. You know, it is good that my 20-year-old, not married, so he has illicit sex, but he can call. I'm here and say, Daddy, I had sex for the first time. <laughs> you know why? Because we have talked about it all the time. We talk about it. All the time. Of course, you know, knowledge don't necessarily mean restraint. So you better know you can know. In <laughs> fact, all of us, we know what we do is a different thing. <laughs> but he called. I had the opportunity to tell him, to talk to him. I say, well, you have done it. Thank God you called. Blah, blah, blah. We had conversation. And we continue to have conversations. The idea that you mustn't so hear what I'm saying. If the woman, men, if it starts with you, start talking to your sons and your daughters. Stop thinking. And most of you here, what is even bothersome to me and hear me, please, is that you're educated. This church is a bright church. Another, but to deal with such an important issue, you can't. You must be able to put that child down. That is your child and talk. Some mothers here. And I'm, I'm, I want this church and you to be the catalyst, to the fighting force going on with the word after. Some of you, your children, 13, 14 years, you have not yet talked to them about their motorcycle. They just happened upon them. They just happened. You can't speak to them. And then they perpetuate because mommy didn't tell me. Therefore, I'm not telling my daughter, and there's a perpetuation of ignorance, and we should be the most advanced people. Amen. In fact, a, a man in church should be the best performer, because you have the knowledge how to eat, how to drink, and you are educating yourself. Instead of this blind way in which we conduct the most important business. Are you listening? Yes. So let me build my so so the the enter his gates with thanksgiving, coach and praise, the lava. And again, this is the part for me. Lava means cleanliness. You come from work, dust on your skin, <laughs> dirty. Didn't bathe. You see a lady here laughing? <laughs> may not be you but you educate your children it's, this is this, this crowd i'm talking to this is not for you some of you are hopeless 
I just say that facetiously what I'm saying, you're of age and it's very difficult to teach people new things. I, I'm trying to save the young ones. That's why you came. You know, some of you can't, but please, please, please hear me. I'm trying to save your sons and daughters. Because as I already established, they know. You hear a teacher saying, adventurers have issues. If I'd ask those who teach 12 year olds, they have issues. They have issues. They are kissing, they are touching, they are playing. And how can you, as grandparents and parents, sit by and just watch it and wonder, how shall we? You better get a sword out and start a fight for your kid. Are you with me? Yes. So, you know, bathing, I'm, I'm just touching thing because I need for you to get it. Cleanliness is very important in, 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 in that issue. Now, all the instruments, a man, now you move into the, the holy place, not in the outer court no more. And you see, you stay a while in the outer court, now you are moving into the inner sanctum, where there is show bread. Shoe bread, which means to feed. A man must be able to feed. Now this is a man. A man must be able to feed his woman. The problem in the garden is when Eve fed Adam. Once the roles is reversed, you have problems. And, I'm, and this is the ideal. I'm not saying there can be a give and take, but there will be problem because the man, the woman is not supposed to feed. The man supposed to feed not only the physical bread, but let me tell you something I've discovered with my ears. A woman is an armor and falls greater in love with a man who has bread inside of him. Bread represents the word of God. The reason why we have so much infidelity and so much problem, there are too many people walking up with all that bread of life. And we men, we are supposed to take a responsibility to make sure that we are spiritual. We are leading by example. Too many women are leaving the house. In prayer, they are the ones calling the family. In the sense of, and not just physical call, but they are the ones that are leading the charge of spirituality. So you have a reversal. So your sons don't know how to lead at home. He can be strong. He can be angry. He can shout. But in terms of leading in a spiritual direction, you have a problem. Light in the tabernacle indicate that a man again, the priest, supposed to illuminate, enlighten. You're supposed to be bright enough. You know what I discovered to have a woman? You don't have to have university education. That is not what I'm talking about. But I see some in my church. I've never seen it in Kenya, and I'm being honest about this one. But in my country, I see it. You know, sometimes you have a man. And then he gets up to make a point, and the wife put down his head like, <laughs> the man is not, it, it doesn't have to do with oratory skills because not everybody has the same ability. But here's the point you're supposed to make sense. <laughs> See, when, when, listen, and I know when a woman has a man who, when he stands and makes a point or utter words, it is profound, it is moving, it is deep, it is cogent. At least it should be cogent. Woman, give me a amen if I'm yeah, talking. Man. Don't stay silent and make these men feel let them off the hook. <laughs> hmm? When a woman can stand and articulate his truth or his error, it doesn't matter when he can stand and represent his family. He, he stands up brave and bold and can talk instead of meandering. <laughs> Make your point. Let your wife see. And I'm telling you, you watch reaction. Some men, as soon as they stand up, woman head down. <laughs> now, for two reasons. One of the reasons their head go down is not that he, and it has nothing to do with oration skills and articulation. It has to do with the coaching, the coaching here of his point. Can you make a, two point, a point without going all over? You end up in capsulet and come back. <laughs> and then it's confusing. That's one reason. The second reason is this. Watch me. Watch me. I need for you to get it. The second reason is this. You hear now? The second reason is this. The worst thing, men, is to be living one thing in, in the house and another thing in public. That's why women bend their head the most down. Because she know you're a beast in the house. 
Once you're a beast in the house and you come here with your jacket and tie as the best deacon. And she just watching this man and eight year old only knows that beast like this. If you know, and listen, if you are discerning, hear me. If you are discerning and you have been in church a long while, you know what I'm talking about. You see this woman's face, it spells out everything because the bride is a reflection of her groom, of her husband. The bride, the church is a reflection. She's a reflector. A woman by nature is just a reflector. Whatever you give, she produces. And watch this woman in church. Watch your faces. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so men, I, I, I mean, this is our move. And I have to say that the end, I, 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 I can at least save a young married man. You know, as, as you heard, I'm over 50. So I'm not so young. I'm crossing the other side. So I have some experience. So allow me, please, to just pass it on. What's this lady's face? <laughs> Go around this one. Because we, and I think responsibility as a man, we need to represent Jesus in every single way. And I don't want to offend anybody, but I can also tell you, it is good, especially as you age, to try to stay as slim as possible. Amen. As you get older, you're supposed to lose weight. Because you know that no more, and I, 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 please, I don't want, I'll just please, please forget that Jesus. <laughs> When your belly, that is why sometimes I go in the night by my friends and I beg, oh, oh I don't want to eat. But this week I ate a, so much tilapia. <laughs> and I couldn't resist some of that. Oh, Lord, that fish good. <laughs> ah, yeah. And I think I'm going to have some this evening again for the last. And then I'm going to fast. But watch me. Men, listen to me. You guard your weight gain as you age. Because as your belly, as your belly, tummy get big, it produces a, a, um, a lot of estrogen and so it kills your libido and it interferes with your manifestation i didn't say that in the book but <laughs> it interferes with your your sexual prowess so i'm telling you if, and if you realize you like that so 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 so, 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 so let me say something to say don't let anybody despise us there's no barrier <laughs> So, so remember that we try our best, and, 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 and so now, elders, when you invite me to your house and I say I don't want to eat, know what I'm protecting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm protecting my future. future. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like <laughs> when I'm 80 years. <laughs> I'm representing Jesus as a man. Amen. 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 No, but seriously, tell me something. Some of you who have, who have your fathers, your fathers, I, I tell young men this, your fathers who ate a lot of bananas and, um, well, we, we, some names are different by us, but avocado and these natural things. These men, as, I know we in the Caribbean who came from you, we watch at you as the ultimate man, eh? Mm -hmm. I want you to know that when, the first time I saw an African man in my country, it was like I was like, are you for real? It's like, yes. I'm serious. We look at you. Because of what we were told, that the African man is a powerful man. Whoa. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. So it's always an admiration when we look. But now it has been so westernized and the food has come in and burgers and, and this meat that the Chinese bring and, and all these things destroy men. And there's a reason because of who men represent. So we are eating food and we are not potent. And I know this because when I was doing radiography and I was practicing radiography, we used to do something called an HSG, hysteriosalpinogram. Hysteriosalpinogram is the test you do when a woman finds herself can't get pregnant, she wants to come. We inject the dye in the fallopian tube so that we, when we inject the dye, we take x-rays to see her, put, her potency, I mean her patency. So, one of the things I did at my bachelor's thesis is that I did a big sample and realized that every time we do this HSG exam and we watch the dye go through the woman's system, it is flowing, it is okay. So then I told myself, then it has to be the men. Mm. 
But you know a man, you go and test. <laughs> Yeah. You go and test. Not knowing the devil is after the male so he can destroy the family. You go and test. So now we started to do a study and we encouraged men. So they came and test. We used to look. And when you see these sperms, a sperm is supposed to swim like this so that they can go. Huh? What we discover, these same men who brought their wives, the ones we could have got to test their sperms, the sperm was swimming like this. <laughs> so it take him for it. <laughs> take forever to reach by the time it reach that big body or my Nothing happened. Why? Food. I said before, from the time the Bible said be fruitful and multiply, he says eat well. There's a correlation with multiplication and your diet. It's not the only thing, but you know, I'm giving you the scripture. So again, we're supposed to represent. So a man, male, we are the, we are the ones that represent Christ in the family. Now I want to say something that many must not apologize for. God has made a woman different to a man. And because a man represents Christ, when you have sex and, 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 and you reach that, 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 that arrival, you reach that arrival, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and a breaks is mash. So a man right after can. <laughs> Why? He gave his life. Watch me. It's a, I tell you in the natural, so it's the spiritual. When Christ came to for his bride, he gave his life for his church. It takes blood and covenant. There is a lot of things going on in my body that is speaking more about God than it is about the event. In my flesh, I see God. So he dies, and she gets life. Saying, hey. <laughs> <laughs> she has all the life in the world. And then she begins to criticize you because you sleep. But let me tell a point for the gentleman. Don't make no apology for her God. Tell her, woman, give me some rest. That is how I made and why. Let me go to sleep. <laughs> Next time you do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is not let, me, let me take a sip for that. <laughs> so what I want what I want couples to do is to begin as they engage, you begin you begin to get more educated as to what the spirit is saying so you can enjoy what the flesh is having. That is why I'm giving the information and has written the book through the eyes of the sanctuary. You don't just engage. When those two bodies are, 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 are meeting, it is interesting because look at and, and the reason why God designed us the way in which he did. You know when Abraham, Abraham had to cut a covenant. The word covenant comes from the word to cut. Hmm? So what they used to do in ancient days to have a covenant, which a marriage is a covenant, eh? The way they used to do, they used to dig a trench, cut, watch me, I'm making a point, there was a trench, there was a cut there. Now, they cut an animal from the head down, put one of the animal piece on one side, piece on the other side, and the blood of the animal will run down. That is what Abraham walked in between. And he walked in between and his feet will get the blood. And what it was really saying, if you break this vow, if you break this covenant, may it happen to you what has happened to the animal. Mm. Well, when Abraham walked between that valley as it were, the Bible told he was knocked out and blackness and all that. But let me tell you, that is why God made the woman body as it is and he made the man body as it is. Are you getting me? Covenant. Your covenant. Covenant. That is why it needs so much blood. It needs blood in a man. If, it, if his blood is, is sluggish because there's too much sugar and all these things, if the blood is sluggish, then you have problems. So you can't walk. <laughs> so there's death. Are you getting me? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll look to it in a chapter. I don't know which one. 
So what I'm saying, I'm making a case that this thing we do to produce our children is more in Bible more than anything else, and it's time for us to adjust this stuff. Okay. So 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 let me just transition a little bit and see if I can then take questions. We get it for our children. I want to save the children. I want to save the kids. And, and again, the reason why I talk and ask the teachers, watch me, parents, grandparents, hear me good. Hear me good. Don't think for one moment your five-year-old and six-year-old is absolutely ignorant about sex. Second point, you know when you were young, you knew more about sex than your parents gave you credit for. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. yes. When, when this parent think you're ignorant, you're so brilliant. Your children know this stuff. But they know it from the wrong source. Mm -hmm. And they have perverted information. Mm -hmm. Because from the time, you know when I was doing radiography, and I'm going all about, when I type in, I want you to research barium enema. Barium enema is when you insert a, a contrast media in the rectum in order to visualize the colon to take pictures and stuff like that. When you type in barium enema upon site, you see the trick you, do you know that when your child looks for Disney and Nickelodeon, and by the way, Nicodemus, Nico, ruler, the ruler of the people, that Nickelodeon that you make your child watch is demonic. The very name to rule them, they control them. So when you type in, you get, well, let me tell you something. If you spell Disney wrong, if you spell Disney, your children love Disney, it sends you to a porn site. And let me tell you, from the time your child sees porn, the way the Lord has rewired the mind, it goes in the limbic system and stores in a file called sex. The young man, the young woman you have in your house, immediately see this thing. They feel guilty immediately. They feel, but they feel powerless because sex was designed to connect people. Sex is the most connecting power on earth. Because when God made Adam, he made him one. Then he split the Adam. And if I had time, I'll show you how Adam made Adam. And when you split an atom, you create problems. But let me say, he split the Adam and bring a woman. Sex, watch, watch. sex is a celebration of that which was one, that became two, and then you're bringing them back together again. And that is why Jesus said, you come here to church with your holy self and you like to fast and pray. But let me tell you something. If you're going to fast, don't fast too long because I need you to have plenty sex. Because the more you have it, the more you become one. Have you ever noticed older couples start to resemble so much? <laughs> <laughs> and the more they resemble, the more you know their business. <laughs> <laughs> Notice it. They start, watch their photos when they just got married. A stroke and cheese. But now it has been 30 years of marriage. You want to know, are you the husband or the wife? They look so much, they have been doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Principle in the scripture, you don't stay away. Because every time, watch me. Every time a woman has an orgasm, she produces a tremendous amount of oxytocin. Oxytocin is the hormone responsible for bonding. Oxytocin is responsible when a woman gets pregnant and she makes milk. It's oxytocin. Am I talking to nurses here? Oxytocin is a binding hormone. And therefore, God is so wise in our sex. The woman in particular, now hear me girls and women here. Every time a woman has an orgasm, she produces a tremendous amount of oxytocin. Now oxytocin is a binding hormone. That is why a woman feels more bound to anybody she sleeps with more than a man. Because a man has less. A man will get up and walk away, but you can't. The man is beating you. He's slapping you. He's treating you bad. He has a pants. He, he pants his tongue and his tail like this. He has no teeth in his mouth, but daddy, I love him. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you, you, you don't know. Why am I still going after this man? <laughs> <laughs> Oxytocin. Bound. Huh? So 
what God did, his intent for sex is that two persons will become one. So even on our flesh, I see God. Because every time we engage, we become attached to one another. So most people, most people in church, no, no, I'm going somewhere. Most people in church, and uh, Abu, most people in church, especially you women, because you have an open sexual system, when a man has a closed sexual system, a man is a giver. And by the way, men is more blessed to give than to receive. Is the Bible says that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but. <laughs> not me, the Bible. No, no. Man has a, a, a closed sexual system, a woman has an open sexual system, and therefore she's more receptacle. She, 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 she's more a receptacle. So every time you, you, you have sex, you, 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 you are joined. Now what happens in church in particular, there are so many you are sleeping around. So when you sleep with Harry, you get his spirit because the Bible says he that lies with the harlot or anybody become joined too. If the Bible says that, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. Because, hear me good, principles don't respect opinions. Mm -hmm. Principles don't respect opinion. There is a principle of gravity. If I throw this up, it will come down. That's a principle. Now give me all of your collective opinion. I want you to say I'm a good seven Adventist. Believe when I throw this book up, it will not come down. Just believe against me. <laughs> Bring all your faith against me. But principles don't respect opinion. So bring your belief. Say it will not come down. It will go up. It will come down. So the principle of sex is that every time you have sex, you become joined to. Because God's intent was every time Adam go to Eve, they come closer. They come closer. They come closer. So if you're in church, and you're sleeping around with many men, and men are sleeping around with many women, you're becoming joined. So they are not a single woman and not single. Mm, that's right, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of people who are single, but they're not single. And the reason why you have not been able to find your boas or find a man, because there's so much people living inside of you, so many spirits. So when you are trying, so a lot of people, now watch me, watch me. There are a lot of people, watch, watch, watch. There are a lot of people, they go around and sleep around, eh? Mm -hmm. Then they find a man. So, they come together, you pay your dowry, looking forward for the night. Da 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 So they get married. Now, you come in the marriage chamber and the image in the head is not the image on the bed. <laughs> I need to say that again. Well, listen, how much time do I have to talk to these people? Can we just talk? Yes. Or some of you have to run. This is, this is, watch me. The image in the head, don't get distracted. The image in the head is now, now, let me, let me settle because this is a very important point and I think they don't want it to be lost. Although I'm looking at your faces and some people thinking now, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that no, but I, I, oh God. <laughs> that man comes, what? <laughs> yeah, I can see some of your faces, but don't, don't say amen, just to keep your head straight. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because everybody you lie with, you become joined to. So, so many people in our churches, so many girls, that is why this subject is important. You think you're single, but you are not. Because marriage had to do more with sex than it had to do with ceremony. There was no, this ceremony is man made. There was no ceremony in the garden. He just put them together and he said, Cleave. The word cleave means have sex. Sex is that which consummates. Anybody you have sex with, you become joined to. Anybody you have sex with, you're like you're married to. So what happened? There are people with 7, 8, 10, 15, 20 people inside of them. So you meet somebody, you now become joined. You ta 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 ta. And when you go to have. Marital sex now. Now you're really married. You find. Wait, wait a minute. There's no connection. And very early in the marriage, you're frustrated. And as I said, a woman, woman that starts lacking starts looking. looking. So you wonder, what, what, what is this? I thought this thing. So now you want to try many things. And now the man and the woman, they find there's a problem. So now you try to invent stuff. The man wants you to swim from the chandelier. Now. <laughs> 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 Do this. Turn here. Move here. Slap this. Take a bed. Hit you this. Handcuff. <laughs> you try to compensate. But there was
are so many, there is no intimacy. So there are a lot of people, yes, and I know you sit here, yes, I know you preach, yes, I know all the doctrines and stuff like that, but sex life messed up. And when that happens now, now you go into the job. And you go on in the work. You're a nice woman or a nice man, you go into the job. You're not satisfied at home. And a woman says to you, or a man says to you, hey sis, you look so good. <laughs> and, and, and you're driving home in your car, and all you're hearing, you look so good. <laughs> <laughs> you look so good. You look so good. You bring that man in your house. You bring that man on your bed. You look so good. You look so good. Yeah. And there's a third party in the spirit. Let me share this. There are a lot of people, even who are married in church, commit spiritual adultery. Let me tell you what is spiritual adultery. When if you come and you don't see elder so, or you don't see sister so, you don't feel good. Because you talk to that person. And I keep emphasizing to married people and people, if you find your quality of your conversation, and trust me on this one, if you find you talk to anybody more than your spouse, you're looking for trouble. The mouth is the organ of connection. Anytime your conversation revolves around somebody, you have to talk to them. If you don't talk to them for the day, you see, and that is a pulse for you to check your own heart. If you find you need to speak to me more than you speak to that person, that's the beginning. Trust me, I have studied this book so much, that Bible. There are so many things, and I warn people. If you want to begin the seas of infidelity, start to engage any opposite sex more than you engage the person you're with. That is why we have prayer. Pray with me. Talk with me. Let's converse. But no, you want to go by Java every day to meet her and talk. But over time, you find yourself slipping into relationship. You feel sweeter. And you think, and now you are more connected here than you are connected home. And you begin to see all the faults so big now. There's a third. Am I talking the truth? Yes. yes. I'm talking the truth. I'm talking the truth. So, Paul says, it is not good to touch a woman. And let me give a meaning for that. It's not good to touch. It doesn't mean touch like this. But it means it's not good to speak to her in a way that inflames her. So, 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 Adventist, oh man, you can be as ugly as King Kong. <laughs> you learn to talk from Sour School. You can talk. And I'm going to show man, oh, we can talk. Or it's always kids, you can talk. We talk, we talk, we talk. And we touch a lot of people. So we are touched. And as we are touched, we have our young girls. Now, now watch me, I want to make a point for those younger ones I'm seeing in here. Have you ever heard about Pavlov dog? Pavlov, those of you who have done psychology, how you condition. Huh? You bring the food, you ring a bell, and when you bring the food, you ring a bell, and then you stop bringing the food, you ring the bell, the dog still if you get it. And so, Pavlov dog conditioned it well. You know what all the young girls do? This. They say, you know, I, I, I don't want to have sex. No sex, eh? Sex for them is defined as penis and vagina. No sex. So they kiss up, they touch up, they do everything else. And then, they get very heated, and they say, no, 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 I can't do this, my mother teach me well. <laughs> huh? So there, close up. Oh, good. You do it a second time. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Aha. No. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. They go now, they marry, now to have real sex. They have been conditioned like Pavlov dog. So when they reach that stage where they used to shut up, they shut up. So now there is no orgasm, there is no arrival. So now they come to the pastor or they can't talk because they want it. So months and months, years and years of marriage, they don't know what, what, what used to happen. Because you know what? You're playing up and think you can kiss up in the church and play up in the church and you shut up. Ah! Now you're married when you should be having real fun. 
Are you getting me, folks? So you see why we need to talk to our daughters and our sons? Some of us, are, some of us, I said, are hopeless. What I mean, some of us have been there, done that, messed up our lives, but we have to protect the, the next generation. Amen? We have to educate them so they don't make the same mistake. And the same thing for men, when a man play up and you touch him up, you know why there's so much rape, especially in Africa, when, because you, these girls, they mess with us, and when you play with us, the prostate gland swells and, and it hurts, actually. When you, so then the man needs to go all the way, and now you say no. When you close it up, so the man in heat. And then he gets crazy. So you have problems. Are you with me? So you see why this subject, isn't this subject important? Somebody needs to raise it in a holy way and put it back where it belongs, out of the hands of porn. Let me make a few points and then I will, I will, I will, so because there's much to say. I haven't written about pornography in this book, but I want to talk about soul ties as I just is a chapter. Too many people, their soul is tied, your soul is joined. Whoever you sleep with, you become joined to. So you are joined to people and you may not know how to break it. When I was in England, I was preaching in a place called Camden. Well, Hampstead, but Hampstead is joined to Camden Town. Camden Town has the most witches you can find. You know, every country, as I was saying, has covering demons. If you go to Las Vegas, it's a gambling spirit. If you go to San Francisco, it's a gay spirit. If you go in the UK, in London, it's a witchcraft. Trust me on that one. I've met them. Hmm? So, I saw these girls with SSS carved in their hand. SSS. Carved like if it's a... So I was curious. Because I was preaching in the area and you had to pass a bar. And that bar had satanic people worshipping as while they are while they're there. So I saw the girls hanging out. So I asked them, what's that? She said, we are sluts of Satan. Sluts of Satan. SSS. What they do, they sleep with warlocks. Men who are also satanists that sleeps with them. When they sleep with them, they get STDs. Not sexually transmitted disease, but spirit transfer disease. Because you see, God intent, sex is so spiritual more than it's physical. There is a transferring of spirits. There is an exchange. He said, he that is of God is one spirit. I am flesh, but I'm drawn to a spirit called God. So sex has dimension of spirit. So they said when they sleep with these warlocks, they, they get their spirit. And then, watch this, they come to church. Then they sleep with your husband. And now he is infected. There is spiritual. Have you? No, I'm talking to this guy. Have you ever noticed a good man? A man who loved God. He was preaching. And all of a sudden, he starts to move with us. Oh God. Let me tell you back and forth. All of a sudden, the man starts to deal with somebody. And he totally changed to an animal. Am I talking the truth? You have seen a good man, a man in love. That is why women, let me tell you something. You don't talk down to a man. You don't treat him bad because you will find himself with a, a spirit. And because a woman has an open sexual system, she's a greater host for demons. It is easily transferred. You are open. That is how God designed you. That is why the serpent went to the woman. She's easier to receive a spirit. Then transfer it. So what these girls do, they go and they sleep with your man and they don't have to actually sleep. Once you begin to connect it to somebody who have demons through speech, through interaction, you become drawn to them sometimes more than your spouse. So now you notice as a woman, your man come home and women are more sensitive because they were made from inside in. The man comes home and you notice there is a third party. You women are very sensitive. There is no evidence. You see no lipstick on his color. You smell no Chanel number five that you don't have on him. But there is something in your guts. Am I talking to you? Yes. Something in your guts tells you something is going on here. And that is the time most of you begin to go for the cell phone. <laughs> the cell phone is the of the evidence. <laughs> 
But you see, the man have three passwords. You know something going on. <laughs> three passwords on the phone. Are you are you getting bored? No. Are you bored? No. Sure. No. Because I'm trying to read you. Why is it that you're a bit shocked and saying, "Oh my God"? Yeah. Father, yeah. Help me yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I need to be baptized a second time. <laughs> And the truth is, you know, most of us inside of here, as nice as you look, and holy as you look, and nice of worship, you are messed up. You are messed up people. We all messed up. And that is why I was preaching grace. But when messed up people come and confess that me and you messed up, we messed up, we can seek help. But the way we fall our heart is you. Is you. That brother is so and so. We have problems. And sometimes we inherit the spirit from our fathers. So men, hear me, as I say. Be careful of these women because you get spirit so fast. And women, be careful. It doesn't, it doesn't have a look. It's a sp- and the quicker you, you sense that you're being caught, the better, faster you should try to run. Because the more you engage and you engage, you get caught, and then you're in trouble. And it's when you fall, then you get up, you have problems. So let me move on. So sex, watch me. I'm, I'm rounding up now. There's many things I can say. I've just been touching. Sex in this sanctuary is like a high priest. Watch me. A high priest going to the most holy place to give an offering. That's why the book again. Sex is like a high priest. Only the high priest is authorized to go inside that most holy place. That's what used to happen. What used to happen if anybody beside the high priest goes? Die. Death. Mm-hmm. So watch me. Sex is like a high priest going into the most holy place. That is why, as I told you, this area, especially a woman, anybody who is a medical doctor or know anything about anatomy knows a woman's pelvis shapes different to a man. You can just watch a woman bone. I don't have to see a man. I can watch and know it's a woman. That sacrum area of a woman is very different. It's really shaped more even like a heart. It's sacrum for sacredness. Anytime anybody enters and they are not your priest, there is death. But because you don't see physical death in church, you think death isn't happening. There are so many walking dead. So many walking dead. And let me make a bigger point. Those of you sleeping, marry people, you get you multiply your guilt and you multiply because anybody who has covenant over them you're missing, you, you're multiplying and compounding the devil. Because covenant, man and wife, and you interfere. So while I'm not condoning singles, but some people, you're, saying, you're looking for a married man, you're looking for, I'm, what is this? You're compounding the problem. So what you find happening, there's a lot of death happening in church. Because so many people are sleeping around with each other. But again, we're just pretending it doesn't happen. It's, a, it's a affecting our sex. It's, a, it's affecting our marriages. And it is killing people. But we have a hush culture. That hush, hush, hush. But I'm suffering in my home. I'm sensing he's bringing home somebody. I'm sensing she's bringing home somebody. But we can't talk. And I think what I want you to do in Nairobi Central... It's two things. One, to raise the subject matter with a very influential church. I was called, as you heard, Abu said, we didn't plan it, it's God. But I really need some advocates. Because I'm a foreigner, I may have a little leeway to address the subject. I want to come and talk to your children. I also want them to get, I have put sex back where it belongs, in a holy place. I've addressed the matter from the subject that we call sacred sanctuary. We say that the way of God is in the sanctuary, it has everything. Second point I want to make on this book, it will encourage people to go back to study the tabernacle, but in a different way. So there will be a renewed energy for this. Let me pause by to watch you all. I'm 
so much as I get older and went through the effects of it I blame my mother because you are right there and you can't discern mothers and fathers inside here today and grandparents shoo -shoos. watch those uncles watch those uncles and aunts this kind of uh, this is do it is most abuse that take place takes place at with family. And some of us be yes, hallelujah, jumping up in church and your child being touched and molested and you're so trusting and unbelief. Watch every man around your girl child. Especially and your boys too. But watch them like with a hawk. This woman in my house interfered with me so much. Four years. You know what it did? Let me tell you what it did. And I'm giving you the thing. Two things when you are interfered with young. is either you get frigid and you're afraid of it. Or you get promiscuous. So when I started getting bigger. Very promiscuous. Yes, I said. Yes, this preacher was preaching with all that power and spirit coming out the book. Yes, I said. Mm hmm Sleep around. Hear me. I need for you to get my testimony before I close. Slept around. Slept around, slept around, slept around, slept around. So much. But God has a tendency of wherever you are falling to make you stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that you can minister. You couldn't write or discuss what I've been. I'm sure it's the first time you have heard this context that I bring this matter. It's because God. He has a way of using the bad to make good. So I knew how to make a long story short. In 1997, I was running around so much that God decided, you see you, you are straying. I want you. So there is hope. I want to give the hope. I used to feel so messed up. As some of you, let me give my story. You, you are finished. You are going home and you are crying. You say, I'm better than this. But you get the phone call the next day and you're born again. The power of sex. You are there in the bed and you're messed up. But, so, 1997, I told the Lord, Lord, I need to get this thing. Not understanding I'm so messed up with spirits. So hear what God told me. And some of you can do this. God told me, write every name that you have ever slept with. And a piece of paper. I was obedient. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote. And when I wrote so much, I get depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so I got depressed. And I... For three weeks. And then... God told me, go and confess to every one of them. Say sorry. That hard for you in Kenya. <laughs> 
So I went to Jane, Jack, whoever. Did. I'm sorry. God is touching my heart. I just want to say sorry for what we have. Just like this. Some of them were so angry. Move from here. You, you can never change because you know you, 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 you broke up with hurt and pain. But every single time I confessed, I felt like if that spirit came out. That spirit came out. The spirit that took the longest was Arangia Pesa. That spirit took so long to come out my system. Every time I see that, I used to feel like years after you still, because some demons are stronger. Until eventually, one day I notice I can see her and don't feel anything. I was released. But that was God's solution to me. Some of you may have to write and burn. But believe me, folks, anybody you lie with, you are joined to. And the reason why sometimes you have sexual problems in a marriage, you have never gotten rid of all those spirits. That is why the image in your head, yes, you are old now. Yes, you are 60s and stuff. But you never dealt with your 20-year-old demons. So you have never enjoyed yourself. You have quarreled so much. You have never had intimacy because you have never treated with the men and women you have slept with. And it doesn't just go away. Demons doesn't work like that, but that's just another subject. They will stick in your marriage. They will stick in your relationship until they destroy it. So, before I take a question, I want at this moment, and I've tried this, but some of you think if I stand or I raise my hand for prayer, somebody else, but the truth is all of us here, I'm sure, almost messed up. I want to pray on this moment before because questions will lead to books and all of that. This moment, I want to pray. The best person to pray for you about something is somebody who has been through. If you are a widow, let an older widow pray for you for strength and grace. If you are a widower, if you have been abused, let somebody who has been through and be healed. God has brought me through a mighty long way. That is why I can preach and he has given me the wisdom to now communicate on different levels. If you want God to touch your sexuality, bring healing. Because now you were ignorant, now you know. And you, you say, God, I now understand why this has happened, why this. And you want healing. Could you stand there? Oh. Oh, what?